Oh yes, it's that time of the year again. Last year around Christmas time I made a free architecture course and lately I thought why not make a new course as a gift. So I did. In this one I will show you how to model a helmet that you can see in the banner using only Blender 2.8 and Substance Painter. A lot has been said about the importance of reference and I don't really want to bore you by repeating it all over again. So just very quickly, this is pure ref, the go-to software for gathering reference and in it you can see I have gathered a lot of images of both a Chalcedian helmet and an Attic helmet type, both very common right around the time of the battle at Marathon where my short film project takes place. Now I've been calling this helmet that I made a Chalcedian, but in truth vast majority of these helmet types were made with a nasal cover. So that means two things. One, it's a mixture of Chalcedian and an Attic helmet type. And two, I couldn't leave it like that and I actually made a variation of my first design, including this nasal cover, so that I can indeed call it a Chalcedian helmet. And so, historical experts hopefully won't eat me alive. I went over all these and kinda ingrained them in my mind. I found out what I liked and disliked and what I wanted to incorporate into my design. To be honest, I rarely really follow a historical reference to a T. I rather try to stay in the boundaries of what the archaeological evidence tells us, but then try to mix things up and improvise a bit. So yeah, no reference orthographic images for me, thank you. Though you can definitely use them, I added them to the project files. What I knew though was that I really wanted to have these rounded cheek pieces with a hard corner and some sort of spiral. The spiral I plan to make in Blender and on top of it around this area add some sort of decoration like you see here. But that I actually plan to make with some displacement in the texturing phase. I also wanted to have this ridge up here, though maybe not necessarily in the back of the helmet. I'm not really a fan of these eyebrows and also I didn't want to have this slightly newer type of the Chalcedon helmet with hinged cheek pieces. Also this archaic crest, I really wanted to make that one. It's so over the top that I had to have it in my film. And that was my reference, I kept it open on my second monitor throughout the whole process and with that I started modeling. So naturally I used Blender and here I have this base hat model which you can download from a link in this video's description along with some other project files. Now there's a few ways you can start building your helmet but the one I found to be the best for this one was to use the round cube because it has a perfect base topology for what we're going to be working on. And if you cannot find a round cube among your basic primitives, it's because you don't have these extra objects add-on activated. So just head over to the properties and find it there. By the way guys, this will not be as basic a series as the pedestal one. I will definitely mention all the important steps and also some important shortcuts. But I will not stop for the basic stuff like uh, adding your object with shift A. Besides, you can see the keys I'm pressing down here. So add your round cube, jump to the edit mode and to see all the faces activate x-ray mode down here. First step to make our lives easier, delete this half of the cube because of course we will mirror it. Add the mirror modifier with X axis active. And while we're at it, also add a sub D surface modifier, you can have it at a level of 2. Then in edit mode, select all your faces and smooth your normals. I actually have this command in my favorites menu, activated by the shortcut Q. Good, now we will start by deleting some of the faces I know I won't need. So these front ones, then the ones below the cheek piece, a hole for the ear and down here in the back select them too and with that hit delete to get rid of these faces. Now of course the shape doesn't look too good. <laughs> it looks like the lime cat. You know, lime cat. Yeah. <laughs> so let's make it a bit cooler, okay? First from side view scale it up and 
Also, if you hit the Y, you can log the scaling just to this axis. Position it better and then repeat the process from the top. You can select this side vertex and scale it down on X axis with the proportional editing active. Uh, you activate it by hitting O and that will start flattening this whole region. With the X-ray mode, find these vertices down here and push them down until they reach about the chin level. Also with Ctrl R add new set of edges and push this vertex forward so it starts rounding the shape. And maybe push these back a little. Back here, select the bottom row of the vertices. You can do it quickly by holding down Alt and clicking on the edge. It will select the whole continuous edge. Push them down and you can flatten them by hitting S, then Z to lock the Z axis and 0 on the numpad. Oops, uh, I was in the 3D cursor pivot point mode, so be sure to have this median point to be able to scale this selection properly. Position the edge around here and add a new loop cut, then push it towards the skull. Also make sure you have this clipping active and then Alt select this middle edges and push them towards the mirrored side like this. This way we ensure there is no gap in the symmetry. So now let's start playing with the overall shape. For this I regularly use Alt click to select rows of edges and then most important the double G tab which will make your vertices and edges slide along the normal. That means you will be able to slide them over your model without changing the shape of the helmet too much. I also often select just one vertex and use the proportional editing, activate it again by hitting O. And if you want to make the proportional area larger or smaller, just scroll your middle mouse button. Now I think it's the time for another modifier, this time it will be the solidify modifier and let's set some realistic width here, something like 3mm will do. Also add a bevel modifier and change this option down here to angle. Or you know what, since I want mainly these edges beveled, we can select them, create a vertex group with them and set this option to vertex group and find it here. Good, let's continue with the shaping of the helmet. That's super important at this stage. You really want to reach a basic silhouette that you like. So I push this vertex up, slide this one with double G to the middle, rotate around the model to see problematic areas and repeat the process. But as it is, I think we have a good base to start with. Most of these ancient helmets have some sort of reinforced edge where the layer of metal was thicker so that when a blade hit it, it would not slice the helmet apart. There's lots of ways we could do this. We could create an extra object duplicating these side vertices. We could also do that in texturing phase, add some displacement to the edges. But the solution I like to use is to change the topology a bit so that it includes these edges. So let's start with the keyboard shortcut K and start slicing along the edges here and then up here and then connect these. Make a triangle here and continue down the cheek piece. The same thing around the eyes and you know, you don't really have to be that perfect. These helmets were made by hand and though there definitely were master armorers who could make a perfectly even edge, I like to make these non-hero assets a bit imperfect. Plus, it's a good excuse for my sloppiness. Alright, delete these two corner vertices and now the goal is to be able to make a single loop cut along the edges of this helmet. So let's have a look where the topology is not flowing how we want it. Also, dissolve this vertex as well. Some quick vertex pushing along the way. By all means do it whenever you feel like some shapes are not to your liking. As I've said, the overall shape is now the most important thing. 
Here I am again using the double G to slide my vertices along the normal. Back to the edge, let's start adding some loop cuts, one here, then here, here and back here. Let's actually use the cut tool here. You can cut across several faces, but it's always better to follow the flow of your mesh. Good. And now with the cut tool, let's start connecting these corner edges. Cut across here and in the front as well. Now when you alt click on this edge, you should be able to select it as a whole, which means we successfully created a loop cut. With this loop still selected, hit Ctrl B to create a bevel and then while holding down Shift, slide it slowly so that you create two loop cuts instead of just one. After that, just Alt select this edge, Ctrl 3 to switch to face selection and then get rid of this edge row. What we now achieved is adding this nicely flowing edge row which we can later shape so that it looks like it's reinforced. And also, don't forget to do some more vertex pushing and double G edge pulling. Now is a good time too to add a sharp edge up here with Ctrl R, creating the ridge. Deselect these back vertices and slide these front ones forward like this. To make this area a bit smoother, I took these vertices and used the edge slide to get them in the middle of the faces. This way you will have the sharpness in the front, but have the shape smooth in the back. And then I continued shaping this area, experimenting with new loop cuts. I actually added one up here. Also I made this area narrower, it looks slightly better I think. You can push this sharp front forward too. This whole area is full of unevenness now, which I don't really like, but we can do something about it by pushing edges and later we will also sculpt the surface a tiny bit so that we fix these areas. The rule here is, the more even your subdivided geometry is, the smoother it will appear and the denser some areas are, the sharper the edges. So keep fiddling until you arrive to a nicely shaped object. To achieve this sharper edge on the cheek piece, I added one more loop cut here and up here I actually decided to add one extra edge running along the center of the helmet because I wanted to have this pointy area sharper. I then decided to push these middle bro vertices down. Now of course this edge is too sharp in this forehead area but we can again fix it by sliding the edges and vertices like this, trying to relax the geometry a bit. Still sharp, but we will in fact solve it later when we get rid of the mirror modifier. And yes, I think we successfully got rid of the lime cat look. Congratulations. Let's do some more sliding. I think at this point you remember the double G keyboard shortcut. And we can again focus on this ridge area up here. Maybe slide these vertices down a little so that the ridge is longer, disappearing around the ears here. And that creates a more pleasing look. Also, let's round up these areas here. And we can even add a new loop cut with Ctrl R here to get rid of this triangle geometry. Though that doesn't really help our goal, it actually makes the edges a bit more sharp. So we may delete these later. So let's first try to relax this area as much as possible. 
And yeah, this could work. From now on, it's mainly adjustments to the topology. So you can, for example, round out this edge area here. You can also push this edge around the eye so that it's less wide. Uh, ah, we had this edge selected as well. So undo, deselect it and repeat the edge slide. Now just focus on playing some more with the overall shape. Make this area rounder. This one as well. Keep looking at the reference images. Don't forget to improvise and try stuff. And shape it until you make it. That didn't really rhyme. And that's it for this first part of this new helmet tutorial series. In the next part we will continue working on the ridge and also model the crest area as well as add some basic hair particles. So don't forget to comment, subscribe and you know, have a look at my Heroes of Bronze project. Oh, and if you like this tutorial and want to support the project, don't forget I have a Patreon page with all sorts of bonuses, behind the scenes and downloadable stuff. But that's it for today and see you next time. Martin out.